Hello everyone, welcome back, it's Owen. Welcome to my uh, 17th video of my Dog Tutorial series. Um, sorry I have not gotten very many videos up, but I've been pretty busy lately, but uh, I'm going to try to get this video up very quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be talking about in this video is some advanced string methods. And I'm going to start out with one that uh, is a, a string method that allows you to, to compare strings and return a value depending on whatever you have. So I'm going to start out by making a string and I'm just going to call it string s and it's going to be let's see I'll make this one dog. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to do system dot l dot print line and in here I'm going to do s which is my, the name of my first string do compare to and then in here we put another string and this is just going to be cat so, whoops, my bad, left at the E. Okay, so if I compile this and I come down here, I'm going to get a 1. Now, first off, what this method right here is doing is it's testing the, val the value of this, or of this string, to this string. And the reason why I got 1 is because this value right here, this capital D, um, is one value. Uh, like in numerical values, it's one value higher than C in the ASCII coding. So, just uh, I'm just gonna say right now, um, any any time that you're comparing and the one that you're comparing, like, uh, the one that you're comparing with, I guess, has a. Actually, I'm gonna use this. Any time that I'm comparing, like if I'm comparing string S, the first one that goes, if the beginning of it is higher than whichever than the string value the very first character is higher than the string value the very first character the string value that you're comparing it with it's going to return a positive integer um, if they are the same it's going to return zero and if it is lower like say I had apples here or I'll just use apple it'll return that and it's going to return negative two that's because it is two the capital A in the ASCII code is two values lower than the capital C. So, um, with that, I'll, I'll just uh, just know that it's not it's not necessarily one zero and a negative one. It's it's whatever, however many values back it is. I'll also do cat here just to show you that this will return zero. And if you do something like, oh well, never mind. I already did that. Um, so, anyways, um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about, just quickly to add on to this, like, you saw earlier how you can do, you know, like, um, equals dot ignore case, well, you can also do that here, you can do compare to, um, ignore case. Now, if you do this, it, well, okay, it gives me the same value. Um, it gives me the same value because it's, I mean, it's really doing the same thing because, it's ignoring the case of this. Um, however, like let's see, if I put in a lowercase c here and I compile it, I'm going to get the same thing. That's because I, I could also do that with the d. That's because it's lower casing. It's making all the. It's ignoring the case of this, which means it's going to all pretty much just be lowercase, um, or it'll all be uppercase if you prefer. But it's going to be d and c no matter what. Um, and another thing. I'll show you this too. I didn't show you this before. If I do this, like I don't ignore case, it's going to give you, you know, like negative 31 because what are they like 26 letters or everything? So there's it's going to be at least a difference of 26 because you're going into technically a whole new alphabet between lower and uppercase in the ASCII coding. So there we go. Let's clear that out. And let's see. Next, I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, this it's a new method also called index of and that's just like this now when you're doing the index of there are actually like six different ways to do this but I'm just gonna show you one because I really don't think that a lot of these are necessary um, are used all the time if you want to um, the, the book is Blue Pelican Java go ahead and get it. I actually do think it's free, I'm not sure, but um, just Google that. And if we compile this, you'll see that this returned us with one. 
Um, now, please remember, this is the index. Um, for those that you couldn't remember, um, strings are recorded in indices. So it starts out with zero. So this is going to be zero, one, and two. If I put in G here, it's going to give me, it'll return a two, as you can see. And if I put in a capital D, it'll return one. And if I put in sorry, let's put in a lowercase D. That's going to be negative one. So the the thing that it does um, that a lot of these methods do, if it's it, it searches an index and it can't find one, it's just going to simply it's going to simply give you negative one. Now, obviously, it can't find this here because I use a lowercase D and it's actually a uppercase D. I could also put H and compile that, and it's also going to give me negative one simply because it is not finding it uh, in that portion of the code. Um, also, uh, in addition to index of, there's also um, last index of, which is um, not, I mean, it's really the same thing. The only difference is that it goes back. <coughs> Sorry, index of actually goes from left to right when it's searching. Um, last index of goes from right to left when it's searching. So if I compile that, it's going to give me, you know, it's going to give me the same thing because it doesn't reverse the order of the index. It just searches backwards. There's really no point to it um, that I've found. There might be, I don't know, I'm sure there are, but, you know, it's just kind of one of those extra things that they decide to throw in with Java. And let's see, another one, this is kind of a similar thing. Actually, it's, it's character at, which you've already seen before. Let's so make character ch, and then we'll do this one. This is going to be x character at, and we'll do two, and then we're going to or have it print out character s. So if I compile this, or if I run it, it's going to return g. And what this is simply doing, it's you have your index here that you print out. Um, it's it's just going to return whichever index is in this, or whichever uh, value is in index two in string s. But you got to make it a character, and you print it out. It's it's similar to the other. One. It's it's similar. All these are kind of similar, but there are of course different uses for them. And I'm just kind of trying to get to these somewhat quickly this time. So, so the next thing that we're going to look at is the replace method. And what we're going to do for that is we're simply going to make another string. This one, let's see, we'll call SS. And it's going to look at this first string. And then this is going to be replace. And of course, what this is going to do, like the name says, is replace a value. So we're just going to take the lowercase v g character here and replace it with a capital G. And then we're going to print out SS. Now if I compile this, come down here, we get D-O-G with a capital G. So, so the next one we're going to do is the contains method, and that's just going to be a simple one that tests um, whether a string contains something. So I'm going to change this first off. I'm just going to change this to, I'm going to the store. I'm not going to the store, but um, it's going to be boolean, and it's going to do, actually we don't even need this line. I'm going to just do this down here. Whoops. I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna paste it right here. I'm going to the movies dot replace. Sorry, not replace. This is gonna be contains. And we'll test let's see. This what this is gonna do is it's gonna test whether the string that I have here contains something. So let's put home. And then it'll print out SS. Now if I print this out it's going to return false because it's checking to see if this string right here contains home in it anywhere and as you can see it does not however if we change this to store we compile that come back here it's going to return true because we have store right here and of course even if we change this to capital store um, please remember that it is case sensitive so it will return a false so with that I believe that's um, oh, well, one last thing, actually. I'm going to do starts with. Uh, and let's see. We will do I'm. 
and this is the same thing. What this is going to do is going to test whether this string starts with this, and because it does in this case, it'll return true. If I make this I'm with an apostrophe or anything different, it'll say false. Again, case sensitive, of course, like all all this is because it's all done in ASCII and they all have their respective numerical values. So um, with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, I'd like to apologize again that I have not gotten many videos up in a while. been pretty busy. Um, on a side note, and I know this is kind of weird because I said I was busy, but um, I just, I, I haven't quite finished it, but I'm, I'm working on a website, and I've gotten a basis for it up. It's uh, it's the real ninjas dot webs dot com. Uh, it's written all the way. It's written fully in HTML5 and CSS3. And this is something I'm doing kind of quickly. So go ahead and check it out. Um, it's not compatible, however, with some browsers, including oh here it is. I actually have it up. It's not compatible with um. Uh, let's see, Internet Explorer. Um, it, right now, currently, is not compatible with uh, Firefox. However, that's a pretty easy fix. I'm gonna uh, be putting that in later. But I'm using some of these um, newer uh, HTML tags, or not HTML tags, but like methods, CSS methods, like these gradients here that aren't compatible in Internet Explorer and Opera. So, with that, I'll see you in the next video.